Tesla stock is up today on good news with the whole market, but Tesla stock is up a lot more than the market. The market is up because of good inflation data, so interest rates may not stay this high so long. Today, Kathy Wood was also called out about her Tesla stock position. One Tesla stock analyst was on TV saying that Tesla stock is going down to $150. There's a lot of Tesla stock news today. Let's go through everything. We'll start with something that potentially is driving Tesla stock higher up today. Tesla has increased the price of the Model Y we will drive in China by about $350. The price of the Model 3 has also been increased, but only by $200, but remember that the refresh is actually more expensive than the old Model 3. And I personally think it is really smart how Tesla is doing all of this. Tesla is not increasing the price of each trim all at once. It first increased the price of the Model Y performance, then the long range Model Y and the long range Model 3, and now the rear wheel drive models. I think this way Tesla creates more urgency and more incentive for people to order the cars now instead of later. Tesla could have just increased the prices of all of these trims all at once, but this creates more headlines and more urgency. You can call it a trick, a gimmick, but I think Overall, this is a good way to do it. Is this actually bullish? For me personally, because Tesla only raised the price of each trim once, it's not really saying much. But if Tesla raises the price again of each of these trims, then to me that becomes bullish. Although if it's just an increase of $200, maybe not really bullish, but if Tesla does it the third time, then these $200 increases, $300 increases start to add up. However, there is also an argument to be made that this latest increase is the most bullish out of all of the increases because it affects the highest volume trims that Tesla has. The rear wheel drive versions, the cheapest versions in China are quite a bit more popular than the long range trims, unlike in the US or Europe. About price cuts, James says, small but meaningful since these models do huge volume and paired together with two other recent price hikes, signals that Tesla is done with cutting in China. This should drive a strong Q4. We get another week of data tomorrow, which actually we now have, and the deliveries in China based on the insurance data equal to 12,700. My first impression about this was, huh, really? With the refresh model three, this week is actually lower. Did these refresh model threes actually get sold in China? What happened? Did they get exported? Something is going on here because this number supposedly should be at least a bit higher than the previous week. I mean, overall, it's not a bad number, but it's not a wow, that's amazing kind of number because we are still slightly behind Tesla's best quarter in China. And Troy was actually expecting 16,000, so over 3,000 more than the actual number. Gary says this could be because of more refresh model 3s being exported to Europe. Luckily today we have the model breakdown already, we don't need to wait for tomorrow, and yeah, it does seem that there are more exports to Europe probably, or there is a problem with production, but I don't think there is a problem with production. So I don't think this week's number is actually bad. If anything, that could say that, oh, uh, the numbers in Europe are going to be pretty strong. So maybe it's not a demand issue. It's mostly a supply issue and Tesla prioritizing Europe for now still. But we don't really know for sure. This is all just speculation. But James emphasizes that there is still plenty of time in the quarter for Tesla to catch up and do a record in China again and hit at least 480,000 deliveries this quarter. Tesla is on its way to double components imports from India, said the trade minister today. We have heard about this before, but now it is actually happening, which further signals that Tesla is indeed very committed to actually building a factory in India and diversifying its supply chain. I say overall, this is good news. This is actually really relevant to Tesla. One of the senators in the US urged the US Treasury today to adopt the strictest possible standards to prevent Chinese produced minerals or Chinese battery companies from winning electric vehicle tax credits. All Model 3s and Model Ys sold in the US currently qualify for the full $7,500 federal tax credit, even though 42,000 of the 160,000 Model 3s and Ys Tesla sells in the US per quarter are 
Model 3 standard range vehicle drives that use the ATL LFP cells imported from China. And this is where it gets really interesting. The Inflation Reduction Act requires that in 2023, 40% of critical minerals in the battery in terms of value need to be sourced either domestically or from a country that has a free trade agreement with the US. However, it doesn't specify how the 40% should be calculated. In other words, you could have 60% of your vehicles with 100% Chinese made batteries and only 40% of your vehicles have 100% let's say domestically made uh, batteries in the US. Now the requirement next year goes up from 40% to 50%, but with that strict language from that US Senator, they could maybe change some of these rules, which would be bad news for Tesla. Unless Tesla can somehow quickly transition from using the CATL batteries from China to batteries made in the US or in one of the countries that has a free trade agreement with the US. If there's one thing that most of our politicians, not all, but most of our politicians agree on is that we should weaken China. So while this is not great news for Tesla, I think Tesla has probably a plan B for a situation like this. So I think it knows what to do and how to handle this. And Tesla is a very nimble company. So if there's a company that can handle this change, it is Tesla. Troy here made an uncomfortable prediction for many Tesla stock investors. I think the federal tax credit for the Model 3 standard range rear wheel drive will drop from 7,500 to 3,750 in 2024. It will lose the 3,750 in 2024 and the second one in 2025. That's because it is divided into two categories. One half is for battery components and the other half is for critical minerals. And the US government says that beginning in 2024, an eligible clean vehicle may not contain any battery components that are manufactured by a foreign entity of concern. And beginning in 2025, an eligible clean vehicle may not contain any critical minerals that were extracted, processed, or recycled by a foreign entity of concern, which is China. But Troy thinks that the long range trims will still get the credit, so that's good. And also the silver lining here is that, according to some surveys, most people do not know about these credits yet. And the credits that will be applied from January 1st next year will be applied immediately at the time of purchase. So you will see the benefit of the credit immediately. You will not need to wait for as much as a year for you to get your credit back. So there is a possibility that with all of that going on, we may not see any negative effects even if Tesla loses part of the credit. But that remains to be seen. The Prime Minister of Thailand visited Tesla's Fremont factory today. The Prime Minister said, it is my hope that this collaboration will cement Thailand as the hub for EV and renewable energy in the years to come. And they are actually standing on this Cybertruck cover. <laughs> that cover is pretty strong. Also, it was pretty surprising that the Prime Minister was actually able to climb up on that Cybertruck like that with ease. I feel like maybe there should be some sort of a fitness test for uh, presidents and prime ministers. If you can climb on the Cybertruck like that, you're good. That's of course tongue in cheek, but uh, this prime minister is not a young guy. I mean, from the looks of it, it he climbed up so easily, but he's already 61 years old. I think at this point it is safe to say that Tesla is at war with the union in Sweden. IF Metal is offering Tesla Sweden employees compensation to join its strike against the company. The union is offering employees 130% more than Tesla's salary. The Tesla Sweden strike is in its third week. It has gained a lot of support from big organizations in the country, but it has yet to gain significant support from the people it affects the most, Tesla employees. <laughs> but we do need to watch the situation closely. So far though, I would say that Tesla is winning. Tesla is investing in the research and development of innovative repair solutions for electric cars that are produced with Giga Castings. Tesla is reportedly looking to develop repair techniques that are efficient and cost-effective and good enough to maintain the structural integrity of 
vehicles. My wife actually just got into a tiny car accident. Everyone is fine, no one was hurt at all. But the vehicle, the, the door, when you lock, when you close the door, there's, it, it's a bit weird right now. So they're gonna need to do something and I'm afraid that may cost a lot of money. But our vehicle only has a few scratches and the uh, headlight is uh, all shattered. But actually our Model 3, I don't think it has, no, it definitely does not have a giga casting in the front. The damage is in the front, but I'm still worried about the repair costs. It's probably gonna be quite a bit. I will keep you all updated. More Cybertrucks were spotted today. Giga Texas, Joe counted 13 on the west, south, and east sides. He thinks though that these were used for photo ops around the area this weekend. All production Cybertrucks are inside the factory today. Drive Tesla says to fully expect a long line of these Cybertruck castings to be on display at the Cybertruck event. I really like this one. Tesla's new predictive charger availability will display how many vehicles are on route to the selected supercharger. For example, here you can see that two cars are coming there. This will improve the charging experience even further. Oh, Tesla now reveals everything that affects its range calculation. There has been some controversy earlier this year about Tesla supposedly showing you fake numbers. And I have to agree with the electric here 100%. I would argue that accurate range prediction is better at curbing range anxiety than longer range. Once, this was quite a few years ago now, I went on a road trip and there were mountains and it was uh, just a bit above freezing and I saw my range draw by about maybe let's say 150 kilometers but I only drove about 100 kilometers. After that, I never ever trusted what Tesla showed me. Of course, not everyone is going to drive through a very mountainous area when it's almost freezing, but it appears that since that time, Tesla has updated how it calculates everything. It takes, for example, wind speed and direction elevation slash grade, which I guess when I uh, went on that road trip, it did not take that into consideration. Traffic speed, average acceleration, deacceleration, ambient temperature, humidity and pressure, solar load and cloud cover, initial battery percentage, initial battery temperature, gross combined vehicle weight, rolling resistance, aerodynamic, drag coefficient, HVAC consumption, vehicle specific energy consumption, bike rack or similar, and battery preconditioning. If you have a Tesla vehicle, how is your range estimate when you drive through mountainous areas when it's cold? and when there are clearly many factors that will negatively affect the range. Is it accurate? Is it good now? Or is there still an issue? I personally don't have any issues if I'm driving through flat terrain, but it's now been quite a few years since I went on that road trip through this mountainous terrain when it was cold. So I would expect that the issue is fixed now, but I haven't double checked that myself yet. Here's a comparison between the Tesla Model Y and Fisker Ocean. The Fisker vehicle is slightly less expensive in Europe. The range is a tiny little bit better. It has 2% more range. It's a bit slower, but it is quite a bit heavier. And despite that, it has a lot less cargo space. What is going on? I mean, you look at this vehicle and you would think that this vehicle would, would be able to store a lot more cargo than this one because of this boxy shape. Also, the top speed is limited to about 100 miles per hour, which I guess is okay, but Germans will really not like that. I like this. Elon Musk just received information that SpaceX is expected to receive approval for the launch of its Starship rocket's second orbital test flight this Friday. I'm looking forward to that launch. Mercedes-Benz just signed two new deals to expand their EV charging network in North America. And I say that's good because this is sort of the experience of charging and an electric vehicle that's not a Tesla. This is going exactly as expected. Stellantis is offering buyouts to about half of its US salaried employees. That's over 6,400 employees. The company says it is trying to cut costs amid the transition to electric vehicles and agreeing to a new UAW contract. And we are seeing more and more stories like this one. Forced partnership with LG Energy Solutions and one more company is scrapping plans to produce EV battery cells in Europe, which was supposed to be one of the largest 
battery cell plants in all of Europe. They cited concerns about the current pace of EV adoption. And there's a leak from Lucid. Supposedly, they are working on this electric pickup truck. These are clay models, and they better hurry up if they want to actually release this pickup truck before they go bankrupt. And Fisker just reported its earnings, or <laughs> to be more precise, losses. Fisker on Monday reported a Q3 loss that was wider than Wall Street expected and said it delivered only about 1,100 electric SUVs in Q3. So they lost $91 million or 27 cents per share, but the estimate was only 19 cents. And in this case, because it's losses. Yeah, a lower number is actually better. And the revenue was only 72 million-ish dollars versus $109 million expected. This Ocean SUV could be the vehicle to bring Fisker to the ocean of bankruptcies. While many EV automakers are canceling their plans to build new EV plants, Rivian is not. Rivian closed on a monumental land agreement last week for 1,800 acres to host its new mega site in Georgia. Construction can now begin on Rivian's $5 billion facility where its next generation R2 electric vehicles will be made. Rivian says that groundbreaking should begin in early 2024. There's a new note from Morgan Stanley. They say that there's pressure for Tesla to increase pay to its workers in the US because of uh, the UAW union and that the union strike is a positive development for China because the US will have higher labor costs now. Jeff has an interesting opinion with which I tend to agree. The 4GM and Volkswagen announced pullbacks on EV capital expenditures and capacity are leading me to believe if they survive, their eventual re-entry to EV slash autonomy will be through partnerships to share risk and make up lost ground. In other words, Tesla should add share next year and be the partner beneficiary. Tesla is really confusing everyone right now. Tesla has removed all language from the page that said you cannot resell or flip your Cybertruck within one year of delivery. But this does not mean that you will be able to flip or sell your Cybertruck within one year. It just means that right now, that particular part about the Cybertruck is gone from the terms and conditions page on Tesla's current website. After the delivery event, this could change again. So I wouldn't rush to make any conclusions that, oh yeah, you will be able to flip uh, the Sabo truck after you take delivery. Kathy Wood was on TV today to talk about Tesla stock and she was called out. Let's take a look. You've been very bullish on autonomy, yes. uh, vehicle autonomy of ETF all around it, mm -hmm. robotics and the like. What do you make of what's happened with Cruise? Yes. The shutdown of Cruise, at least the temporary suspension yeah. of it. Uh, Derek Khosrowshahi, who runs Uber, was on the broadcast last week. Yeah. He said he doesn't think that autonomy, in terms of autonomous vehicles or robo taxis or the like, are a real thing for another five or ten years. Meaning he, he's. A, and by the way, I think five or ten years ago he would have said five or ten years yeah. ago that was what you know. And, so and so, so would Elon. And, yes. And so and so here we are. Yes. So what have you changed your view about that? No. I mean, you must have because I imagine if we go get tape of a conversation that we all probably had five sure. or ten years ago, we probably said five 20, or ten years 22, from now. Twenty-two, twenty-three, right. twenty-four. <laughs> we we actually uh, delay ours by one year relative to Elon, so maybe it should be two years. But. Here's where we've learned how important Tesla's uh, proprietary data is. Uh, it's five million robots around the world. Cruise didn't have anything like that. It had hundreds. Five million robots around the world collect data every day and send it right. back to Tesla. Tesla has more corner cases, which means disengagements, accidents, uh, information like that, than all the other companies in the world combined. And I have to tell you, watching the breakthroughs in AI that we are seeing, they are astounding. The, the speed at which this is moving. Right. Uh, so it is interesting. I think it's a data issue. Autonomous taxi platforms uh, are the biggest AI project in the world. And therefore, we think Tesla is the but biggest you have sold, AI. Uh, My conclusion looking at all of the AI innovations is, to create something like ChatGPT, you need to have tremendous amounts of data. And if you don't have that, then you cannot create it. Same thing goes with autonomous driving. You cannot just go to the internet and say, oh, I, I need 1 million edge cases. I need video clips 
that show all of these different crazy unexpected edge cases. You cannot do that. You need to create that data yourself. You need to go and collect it, which positions Tesla to clearly be the number one company to solve full self-driving. Even if Tesla did not have Elon Musk, I think it would still happen. You've sold Tesla shares, and it's, so, you know, it used to be the number one holding, I believe, mm -hmm. in, your, in your ETF. It's now number three. You've sold yes. about 20 million shares. Yes. Why? So, um, well, whenever it goes up, it was up uh, about 150% relative to our other names, many of which had not moved. So we will all, always um, uh, recycle that way, take profits, and... Uh, I would also say, listening to Elon on the last conference call, he's very concerned about the economy, mm. as we are. Kathy, will, will, you, will I look outside five years from now and see GM and Ford EVs everywhere? It's very interesting to hear both of them pull back saying... But do you I, think, I, 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 with this new way, I, I think, I don't even know if we'll be talking about GM so and Ford in five years. What is interesting about the news that both of them are pulling back for profitability reasons, they can't be profitable in this space unless they scale. That's how this so it's works. It's a catch-22. So it's catch-22, and their shareholder base is very internal combustion engine oriented, and they want their profits now, and they want their dividends now. Uh, and they don't want that kind so of So how are they going to do it? Losses. Will they be able to? I don't know. I don't know. All I know is, back to the Tesla question, as they are pulling away, I, our market share uh, expectations for Tesla go up. Right. You know? And so to answer the question, we sold as it was up 150% relative to everything else. We have not sold m much since then. And it will, all, it will, if we're right on this autonomous uh, taxi opportunity, it will remain in the top five in, right. in our fund, in our it's, flagship. It's so companies like Ford and GM, they want profit now, dividends now, and bankruptcy. We can have that later. But in this little clip, Kathy Wood does sound a little bit less excited about Tesla. Kathy Wood certainly has the room for Tesla stock purchases. Currently, ARKK, the main fund that Kathy runs, has room for $124 million in Tesla stock purchases. Kathy Wood, though, is not changing her five-year Tesla stock price targets. So it doesn't seem that Kathy Wood is bearish of <laughs> about Tesla stock or anything like that. To me, it sounds more that maybe she likes a few other companies maybe a little bit better, specifically during this period of time, which could maybe last or a year or two. And another reason why uh, Tesla stock is not number one in her fund, uh, at least for some period this was the case, some of these other stocks went up quite a bit more than Tesla stock. But it is also true that Kathy Wood did reduce her Tesla stock position earlier. But every time when she sold Tesla stock, her position in Tesla stock was more than 10%. And it's fairly standard for fund managers to keep their positions, no matter how excited and how convinced they are about a position, it's still normal for them to keep their positions roughly at around 10% or under. So I wouldn't really make a huge news splash here saying, oh, Kathy Wood no longer believes in Tesla stock. Not at all. You have to remember that Kathy Wood is an active fund manager, meaning if she sees let's say an interest rate environment that creates a disadvantageous position for a company like Tesla, but there's another company that just maybe not as good, but it wouldn't be affected by interest rates and the economy as much. She might make a choice to invest in this other company that perhaps does not have as much potential as Tesla because it is better suited for this specific environment and it will do better uh, during this period of time. That is not at all how I invest my money. I just look at the fundamentals and I invest based on these fundamentals. I don't really care what's going to happen in the short term. I do not trade like Kathy Wood does. However, I do believe that if you make money trading, which is a very tiny minority of people, if you can do that, there's nothing wrong with that. So, um, yeah, in the meantime, here's what Tesla has done during the same period of time. I became a Tesla stock investor in early 2019 and the ride has been quite a crazy one. Tony Saganaki was just on TV to talk about Tesla and overall he's a fairly decent analyst. Although about Tesla, eh, it's a slightly different story. You're basically 
the opposite of Kathy Wood. You've got an underperform rating, a $150 price target. Um, and, and I think that was interesting when I read through your notes is that, you know, you have all these estimates. You think uh, full year 24 estimates on the street are too high. But it almost doesn't matter because if you take a look at how Tesla has reported and how they have missed estimates in terms of deliveries for a number of quarters, they've missed on some of the metrics for the quarters, the stock is still up 80 percent this year. So how, how do you look at this stock right now and say it's 150 when it's just it's divorced a little bit from from these estimates and, and the expectations on the street? I think in the near term, Tesla stock has been extremely difficult to call. As you know, I think earnings estimates for this year have gone from six dollars to three dollars. And yet the stock is almost double uh, from the beginning of the year, albeit still down considerably from you know last the September, October levels. Um, and so I, I think that's very challenging for investors when uh, numbers are generally coming down and the stock is holding in there or actually gaining ground. Um, I think a lot of it is because there's continued belief in the longer term vision of Elon Musk and, and Tesla. Um, I think he showed the clip of Kathy Wood saying she really believes in autonomy. Um, you know, others have espoused the fact that Tesla will have dominant market share you know, 10, 15 years from now, 10, 20 million cars. And so I think while that uh, hope is is still um, possible and is still alive, you know, it's difficult for the stock to, to go down. When a known Tesla bear says that it is difficult for Tesla stock to go down, I think we are in some sort of advantageous position because Tony does not hold back. He believes that Tesla stock will go down, but yet he's saying it is difficult for Tesla stock to go down. And he admits that, yeah, uh, people do believe in the long-term vision of Tesla. And if you think long-term, what Tesla is doing in the short term does not really matter all that much. I mean, do you care today about what was going on in 2019? Tesla executives leaving, lots of problems inside the company. Do any of you care about that? No. No one cares today that the Model 3 Ram was extremely painful. People, at least the ones with a long-term investing horizon just care about what is going to happen in the future. And my belief remains that Tesla will do extremely well in the future, in the long term. I think the big question for me is next year, do they have to cut their growth targets? Might they only grow at 10%? And I think it's certainly possible in 24 and 25 that Tesla could have pretty modest unit growth because they're not going to have new models and they're struggling mm -hmm. to grow now without doing major, major price cuts. So the Cybertruck is not a new model. We're going to move on because we don't want anyone to know about it. Otherwise, people will start buying Tesla stock even more. I want to talk to you about China, um, since that's supposed to be a, a major engine for the Tesla story in the future. Uh, Lee Auto, a competitor there, has been gaining market share. Granted, it's only 4.5% according to its latest uh, earnings report, but that's up from 1.5% a year ago. Tesla has been losing a little bit of share. HSBC, in its initiation last week with a sell rating, uh, pointed out that the EU might be looking into probes. Um, and so that could impact, I mean, it, it exports 40% of the cars made in Shanghai right now. That's some old information. We already know that Tesla is not going to be investigated by the Europeans. Tesla is furious is not in EU's Chinese subsidy probe. And that's supposedly because Tesla is not getting the money from the Chinese government. That's quite a headline there. But no, the probe is definitely not an issue for Tesla. It is though for some of the Chinese companies like BYD. How do you take a look at the China story and, and is there... You know, if it was worth X amount in its share price, you know, eight months ago or a year ago, what is it worth today? Is there a discount associated with that? I think, you know, the Chinese EV market is incredibly uh, competitive. It's, you know, one out of every three cars sold in China this year are EVs. There is an 800 pound gorilla, uh, BYD in China, who is growing much faster than Tesla. They just reported 25 percent automotive gross margins. Uh, Tesla's at 17. They only make uh, EV-related cars. Notice how he said EV-related cars, which also includes hybrids, by the way. So it's not really a fair comparison, not at all. You know, there are others like Li and Xpeng who are formidable competitors as well. And so the Chinese market, which is the largest car market in the world, is the most competitive market. It has the most models. It has the most competition. And Tesla has its lowest share there of any region. 
Its share in China of the EV market is about 10 percent. Its share of the EV market in the U.S. is about 70 percent. And I think over time, you know, markets will become more competitive. The European market will become more competitive, is becoming more competitive, as the Europeans have come out with pretty good EVs and the Chinese are moving in. And I think over time, the U.S. market will become more competitive. And that's, that's the challenge for Tesla is it's playing in a hyper-competitive marketplace. And it's really, really difficult for one player to have outsized share or profitability. And, and that's ultimately our concern about Tesla longer term is that it is really a car company and the car industry makes it difficult for anyone to have outsized margins or share over the long term. I do not think it is fair to compare Tesla's market share in China to other companies when all these other companies are selling much cheaper EVs. We need to wait until Tesla releases the next generation vehicle and then we can compare the market share numbers and I believe then the market share that Tesla will have will be significantly higher. For example, we can look at the Ferrari market cap of $62 billion and say, oh, Ferrari's market share of all vehicles is so low. This is preposterous. How come they have a market cap that exceeds BMW's market cap? This makes no sense, is basically the argument that Tony is making here. Overall, Tony is not a bad analyst, but he is not a good Tesla stock catalyst, historically speaking. And YouTube says you should watch this video next, but if you haven't finished watching this video yet, watch this one first. My name is Matt Post. Just like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.